Nadia, Valentina, and thank you, Ramon and Ug, for inviting me here. And I have to say something before to start. This is not only about makers. Makers are some part of this. But it's more what happened in, when we talk about smart cities, we always think about the city, like an, a central actor. When I, I will try to talk about what happened in the process that became smart cities or trying to become smart cities. Uh, who are the actors of this process and things that happen in the city. It is I mean, the idea is that digital technologies or smart digital technologies that I will explain le later what it means are one of the central actors of these imaginaries that uh, Ugo was talking. And are central actors not only because the idea of a smart contained that kind of technology, if not because they are the the things that are pushing the smart to the arena of the discussion. We, we cannot understand the terms of smart and smart cities without the technology that allowed that. So uh, we, I'm part of the Media Acciones group and we are researching on companies and creative labs now in different topics, but we think, on a, in, in the institute, uh, there are other people that are working in similar things, like Maxi, and we are trying to understand what means creative lab, but for an operational idea, we are talking about hubs, makerspace, hackerspace, fab labs, co-working. I'm not saying it's the same, but we understand it's in, in a group in one sense. And my specific research, I'm a PhD candidate in this house, is about um, in, is, is in the configuration of Internet of Things and Smart City, but it's about process of creation and the relationship between persons, things, and the flux of, of the process of creating digital technologies, specifically Internet of Things. And the focus of my thesis is in materiality and vision of future, but I, I will not talk about that today. <laughs> but this is a, a very small map that w w which we understand as a process to, to do a smart technologies. In the base of all smart technologies in the, any project of smart cities in the world is the Internet of Things. That is a technology that uh, is embed Internet into the objects and allow objects to communicate between them and with Internet or person or different devices with the Internet. And in general, but specifically in Barcelona, there's two ways to understand the, the construction of this technology. One is the model bottom-up that is more connected with these creative labs, but the, the non-institutional creating labs, like our technologies like Arduino that I suppose everybody knows, but if not, I can explain that. And it's connected in, in, at the beginning with fab labs and yes, like 3D printers, healthcare devices, open energy, visualization of data, open data. And it's connected with uh, one of the things that uh, are in the environment coming from the think tanks and the hub that is the idea of a smart citizen. We don't need in a smart cities technology if not it's connected with the people and it's not allowing people to be more smart. On the other side, there's the, the model top-down that is companies or even creative labs that are creating technology to apply directly to the city, to situation to the city. Not thinking like Ramon explained before, like the whole city, if not concrete things that are happening in the city for the, the point of view or institutions, governments and companies, inter, uh, global companies. That is connected with technologies like or, or ideas of technology or application of technology like smart grid, water, electricity, gas parkways, lighting management centers, or ubiquitous computing RFID in general. And it's more connected with the idea of the whole city and how we, are, we live in the city and how this technology could help us to, to get a better environment. And the point that connects both technologies in, in this general framework is the opti optimization of resources. That means the idea behind the smart is always that we have to optimize resources. In every technology that is around this project is connected with that. And one of the moral justifications that appear always connected with this, this speech around these technologies is the common good. What's mean the common good? The common good is 
have a better city and have a more smart citizens or people that can create their, their own way to be smart is, is, is the best for us as a society. But the point is this, is uh, there is a tension between what, what seems one of the this model and others to, to be smart or, or who is, what is the, co the, the common good. And the tensions are regarding participation, who is participating in this kind of project, who is participating in the creation of this technology, and for who is this technology. Uh, there is citizenship, who is the, who, who will be the owner of this technology, who will be the actor of this technology, and for whom it, it is. Surveillance, that is a well-known topic, the, the production of the information of these technologies is really public to private, and of course the open data that is one of the, uh, currently is the, the biggest discussion around this. And there is this, all this tension is connected with two topics for me, or two areas of the process of creation technology. One is material practices, the other moral order. And this, for example, is the into this, the, the idea of discussion of how we produce hardware and software and which kind of moral values we are attaching to this different production, for example, uh, free software to private software, that kind of thing. And uh, it, this is carrying two images of technology, like the images of smart city, these images of technology is always putting in the technology the, the role to, to create this ideas of smartness or these ideas of, of the common good. The point is, so following Bolton's key, the common good is a con constituent part of human relationship and forces that move and motivate people. That is, this idea connect this, in theory, opposite or, or intention models because the justification of this process to create technology at the end is the same, the common good. For who is the thing that we could <laughs> ask him before. What mean this, specifically, what mean these things that, the things that they are pro pro the, in the production with things we are talking? We're talking, one, the model, the bottom up is more connected with the create smart things for social innovation projects. That, I, I put some examples to understand what I'm specifically talking. And one is the air quality or smart citizen or visual open visual data or groups of people discussing about how we can regulate these technologies or small computers so everyone can make. And the idea of this is the, put the, in the smart, the idea of inclusion or innovate in the social sphere, not in the City in, in the cities, using that idea that are coming from the smart cities for innovating other areas of the society. And in the other side, the idea of create smart things or technologies for solutions that the city already, uh, or problems that the city already has. And this solution could, in, in one point, are are talking about these images of smart cities or imaginaries of smart cities that Ramon and Ugo were talking. I will be... That is connected with the, the flu of the city and how we can uh, improve our lifestyle in the city for the future, of course. In, in all of this, there is one specific place that I were talking a little bit is the maker spaces and how it connects with a some new ethos by Christian Andersen, but I'm not sure if it's a new ethos. That is, do, do things by yourself. The idea is you can do your technology, you don't have to wait for that companies, institutions, or governments create technology for you and you became only a an user. And it, it's, makerspace are working in the way that we understand now, like from the last 10 years, I think, more or less. And it's the whole idea of craft people doing things by hands, but in this case, it's more tech-oriented. And it's, it's are places where people is creating their own, their own technology for their own purposes and sharing knowledge and different things. For these people, the importance of the create things by hands or the state creating the, the, their own technology is connected with, in the, if you can create your, your own 
object, you can contribute to new ways to understand the future, to, to new social futures. So it's more connected with the in intervention in the social life, not in the city or not in the context. Okay, it's not important. I will try to be more, but there is another actor that is connected with that, that is to connect the last point of the presentation is, there is a, sp a specific creative places that I call hubs and think tanks, that they're trying to connect this both of model to creation of technology, and, and in one point they are saying, we can to bring these things that are happening in these spaces and this ways to understand smartness, smart, to, smart concept to the companies at the top, top down model. And I think these actors, I mean the hubs, are places that are bringing these people to create things with the ideas and the notions of what want the, the, the companies. The point is, what we are trying to say, the smart technologies are simultaneously supporting and, and undermine the smart utopian agenda. I mean, they can be the thing that could cut off the agenda or they have been the thing that are, became real, the, the smart agenda. They're not things like one way to produce, another way to produce, or one way to understand the production of technology, another working in the smart city project. Both are working in the same framework and are, are constructing the same ideas of innovation, participation, and creation, but with different ways to justify it. The point that Doris highlights is the, the way that we have to take out the idea of innovation, participation, and design from, from the frame that we are creating. Because if not, we will create in the same way, besides if you are in an non-institutional places or institutional places. And last, but uh, not less, the idea who we can understand how we can be at different models to understand or create the smart and more connected with, with we are understanding of crea as creativity and we are understanding about imagine technologies or create technologies in the way that we can figure out what, what is a new technology. And the thing is, it's not about the way that people are practicing the creative technology, or the way they are justifying what is the use of this technology, if not the way in the process that they are imagining and creating these technologies in the way that we can understand what, what with possible smart concept we have in hand. And I think it's over. Thank you very much, Deborah. Uh, uh, any question? Yes. Thank you, Deborah, for the talk. Um, just briefly answering a question you asked me before. Uh, I've been doing, so my field is uh, multilingual information access online, and I've been working with social networks and multilingualism. I would like to ask you three questions, uh, very briefly, really. It's just clarifications. Uh, this model of the, because I'm new to the field, right? Okay. Uh, this model of the bottom-up approach and the top-down approach that you talk about is something that you came up with, or there's something from the literature? Something from the field work. I mean, people yes. who is involved in this kind of technology, they divide okay. this uh, I will ask you later the references. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the other clarification is, um, sorry. I have my questions not here. Uh, so you talk about the role of makers and then about the role of hubs and think tanks. Mm -hmm. It is not clear to me well, what, how do you conceive the, the role of hubs and think tanks. Could you just clarify it a little bit more, please? In the last six or seven years, 
There are new places like combined the, this idea of craft to create with hands and with the policies of, for example, Barcelona or London or New York future. Everything is from New York and London. And the aim of this house or have some think tanks because they're have in, into think tanks is connect what is happening in these creative labs around the world yes. and the policies and the companies creating the smart technologies. Okay, so so it's the I mean it's like a bridge is bridging those it's bridging kind of those contradicting communities, yeah, right? In in theory, contradicting communities. I'm okay. Um, and finally, in the so I, I just had in, uh, in my head uh, the, the work of uh, the Fab Lab here in Barcelona mm. with sensors for air quality mm. uh, coming from the Fab Lab. So I conceive that as something that fits in your bottom-up model. But I also know of another uh, project of sensors for air quality that come from a research center uh, the uh, Environmental Epidemiology Research Center. Mm -hmm. So it's they are kind of doing a similar thing, but would you conceive that as something that comes from the top down, uh, from a research center for some research project? Or I mean, I'm not considered that, but the point is this air, specifically air quality is not coming from a fab lab. It's, I mean, it, well made in, it, it, it was made in a fab lab, but it's coming from a guy who is at Borden, who is working for uh, the state of New York, and he, he is part of the um, board for the good uh, practices and companies in the state of New York. And he decided to use this, create a thing that could help people in everyday life to understand how, how contaminated is the air around the houses and in, in factory spaces or, or in factory neighborhoods and that kind of things. And he created Think the idea, bring the idea to a fab lab here in Barcelona. We don't know why. Okay. I start to uh, contact people in order to create the hardware and the board, the mother, and the software, and I start to replicate ways for, uh, uh, from other projects to do this in cheaper way and accessible for other community managers in the world. I mean, and it's the same idea, I'm sure, about the, that project that we are talking about. I'm sure the idea is more or less the same. Create a thing that could improve the quality of life of people in a specific neighborhood or in every neighborhood. It could be replicable in every community in the world by a community manager. I think the, the description of what bottom-up or top-down, I think it's not coming from a research. It's coming from a... It's not an analytical <coughs> category or understanding of what happened. It's more the categories that companies and state and institutions or governments are talking about this, the mm -hmm. ways to create technology or commu European community. Okay. And, and for example, I'm, I'm researching techies and techies know that. They, 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 they don't think in this way, bottom up, top down. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Hello? Yeah. Just one question regarding the, the idea of common good. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know if you are analyzing uh, this particular mode of justification that is yeah. taken from uh, Voltansky and not by common good in the case, in the particular case of of uh, smart cities, smart citizens, smart cities, sorry, or smartness, and uh, and how? Because I think there's a lot of common. I mean, there's a lot of uh, commonalities between both mm -hmm. both talks, because it seems that the, the idea of smartness is being mobilized. As a, as a form of justification. So I think it would be great to, mm. to, I th Danny, to know I th a bit more on, on that. I think you have to wait to, that I write down my thesis, but <laughs> um, I, I think I have not a right answer for that, but the point is 
I cannot think about one justification or uh, about one proof in words of Bolsensky, but I can think about uh, how people are constructing the context to justify that kind of things together, in the sense. There is no difference between the kind of justification, if not the kind of the framework that that, that justification are applying. No, but we can discuss later with... Alicenda, Dani, le puedes pasar a Alicenda, si es clau? Just a, just a short question, because it, it interests me. It's, uh, in the contrasting with the first presentation, I wonder what uh, visions of futures are you referring to? And if you think that, that uh, the difference between makers or top-down planners or urbanists in the city mm -hmm. are imagining the city in different ways. I mean, what do you understand by visions of future? And if you have seen some differences between the kind of imagination that the, mo the makers mobilize or uh, urban plan, urban... Urban planners or yeah. people. Yeah. This is a basic big, I mean, the differences are a, a, a lot. And I think the, the, the central factor on that is who is the, who is the principal character in, 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 in each movie. I mean, for makers, the idea of inter, intervention is connected with the thing they can do. And the vision of future is we will do our future together with the city. And in my experience at around the, the, the urban planners or engineers working for a big company, so the kind of things that are not connected with the people who is really creating this technology, internet of things in this case, is more the, the city will be with the people. I mean, the, 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 the image of the city is like a intellectia. Intellectia is in English, yes? an intellectia of, of uh, uh, in a place like a more connected with Charles Taylor idea of technological imaginaries. We will create through technology a new place to live with the citizens. And then the outside, the, the images of the central images, we, we, the citizens, will create our future like we want. But at the end, the, the idea of, of the good future or the good city is more or less the same, <laughs> like in smart. OK, uh, if there are no further questions, now last, no? no. La last but not least, uh, Valentina, now talking about communities, creative communities in Barcelona. Thanks everybody for coming here today. Most of the people that are here and you probably don't know or me are people that I interviewed during these four months and I'm happy they wanted to share with me this uh, uh, speech because uh, I'm not sure I have taken the whole picture yet uh, and so they can contribute and fix uh, what I'm saying if they think that it is not completely uh, what they were trying to tell me. Um, I'm, just briefly, I'm Valentina Bazzarin. I, no one is able to spell correctly my surname uh, in the world. I asked to Ramon to introduce and coordinate the panel because I'm totally shy. So if I'm speaking too much, fast, too fast, please just take me yeah, and say, yeah, uh, despacio. Uh, and uh, I don't speak Catalan or Spanish, but uh, you can ask me any question in Catalan or Spanish because I can understand. So that's all. Going back to the last question by Elisenda and uh, also to the factor we are missing in these uh, first two presentations, um, the crisis factor uh, is what uh, uh, emerged from my fieldwork in these uh, four months as uh, uh, what uh, changed uh, the vision uh, for the future of most of the people working and living and uh, trying to um, trying to live 
also to survive in this uh, supposed to be smart city. And especially in uh, this uh, district uh, that was done to uh, try to give uh, a, an opportunity to these people. I will try to be less political as I can. I promise. Okay, um, uh, I was born in the 1980, so uh, when I was an adolescent, uh, this movie was really meaningful for my generation. I don't know if you know him, it's Reality Bites with Winona Ryder that is doing uh, her uh, final dissertation and the final speech, and uh, um, she is talking about, during this speech, about uh, which will be her role uh, in, uh, in the future. And the future, she was imaging is the future uh, that we are living right now. So I use uh, this uh, movie also when I teach at Bologna University just to uh, compare the vision of the future of my students attending a class in which uh, it is called um, placement. So they are supposed to find the work after my class. Um, or a role in, this, in the society. So I compare this vision from the 90s and their vision in these uh, uh, first 10 years of the 2000s. And uh, what, emerge, uh, what emerges from uh, my students' uh, vision is usually what Putnam have seen in the same period of uh, the movie. The movie is uh, of the 1996, 90, I think, 1998. And the Putnam in uh, 1995 was talking about uh, what he was uh, um, observing in, um, in the US uh, in that period. I mean, uh, Americans of all ages, all stations in life, uh, all types of disposition are forever forming association, groups of people. Uh, there are not only commercial and industrial associa associa associations sorry, in which uh, all take part, but others of a thousand of different types, religious, moral, serious. And nowadays uh, we are assisting, we are witnessing uh, of uh, a change in the um, work in, uh, in the workplaces, and we have association of people that are co-working, collaborating, or cooperating in these spaces that are also made to make it possible. And uh, going back to the Barcelona level, what emerged from my interviews was also um, that most of the, these people came to Barcelona because they were totally attracted by this uh, Barcelona model, both as, uh, because it was an opportunity of uh, um, catching this vision of future or exploiting this vision of future, uh, and uh, both because um, they weren't comfortable in the places uh, in we, from which they come from, for instance, Italy. And uh, um, also in the places uh, in which they uh, are coming from, uh, there are no spaces like uh, Eventido Saroba in which everyone is invited to, uh, to, to place uh, its uh, activity or to participate in someone else's activity. And so they were attracted, but uh, after the crisis, they are saying that uh, they are um, evicted by this system that for 10 years uh, hosted or was more or less welcoming them. And uh, this is why the crisis uh, in my, um, in my research, uh, fieldwork results, is uh, seen as uh, the shifting factor. Um, the crisis is, uh, in some ways, um, making this, uh, um, this picture more and more real. Uh, most of the, these people are working okay in tech, but uh, most of them are techy, total techy, but uh, a great part of the people that are working in the Ventidos Rob and in Poblenou in general uh, considers themselves creatives, craftsmen, or artists. Um, 
in my background, uh, in the world of uh, culture, all these kind of jobs are uh, included. And uh, so when I have seen these pictures uh, from uh, Alfredo Gia, uh, where uh, culture and capital are the same, are uh, totally overlapped, I realized that uh, most of the people were telling me the same thing, that uh, uh, for them, culture was not uh, a vision for the future, I mean, exploiting culture to uh, have a job, but having a culture, having a background, having um, a knowledge, having um, or producing culture uh, was becoming uh, um, the only way to produce also or to be part of a capitalistic uh, society. Um, Actually, I was attracted uh, by Barcelona, uh, not for the uh, op job opportunities, but because I was there during uh, the 15th of May uh, 2011, and I was participating uh, in the protest. And uh, as I did, uh, many people after uh, they participated in the 2011 protest are still here working on uh, um, what happened, to try to understand what happened. And uh, I have put these uh, pictures uh, in my presentation, uh, not only for a personal uh, memory, but uh, because I think uh, this was another shifting moment in which people realized uh, how they can uh, come out uh, from the crisis. Uh, the moment in which uh, most of the people have understood that a group of people can do something different, can change uh, their mind. And uh, I was totally surprised because uh, many different people working uh, in tax, working uh, in the hunger, uh, people that are interviewed, uh, uh, just meeting them uh, in, uh, um, during, sta during startups meetings, uh, were telling me that they participated uh, in the uh, 50th of May protest and they were able to contribute, uh, bringing their skills uh, to the discourse or their experience expertise or their uh, story life in the whole discourse about uh, how Barcelona can come out from uh, the crisis, the cultural crisis, the knowledge crisis in which we are, because it is not just an economic crisis, uh, as I think, I guess, we all agree. Okay, um, what are doing the artists uh, to overcome uh, the, 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 the problem of job and uh, their cultural problem triggered by the crisis. Most of them are hacking the city. Uh, there, this is a, a picture from a group of working everywhere in the world, uh, in Barcelona too, and uh, they are just uh, using some different materials to uh, fix uh, the walls. They are using the Lego, I don't know, the bricks, the kids' bricks, um, to fix a part of, uh, of the city. And then uh, they are doing it also in um, in Barcelona. This is uh, an example among others. Uh, the way in which uh, uh, the creatives are coming from the crisis is uh, trying to replace themselves in the social context. Uh, according to Sennett, the sense of a place is based on the need to belong, not to a society or a smart city, I can add, uh, in the abstract, but to somewhere in particular. In satisfying that need, people develop a commitment and lo loyalty. As the shifting institution of the economy, the, initial, the experience of belonging somewhere special at work, people's commitment increases to geographical places like nations, cities, and localities. And I have found this sense of belonging, also in my interviews, uh, a sense of belonging that was not related uh, uh, with the district, Ventidos Roba, but was related with the communities in which uh, these people are taking, uh, doing their activities, uh, their leisure activities, their work activities, um, and so on. And uh, the sense of belonging to this city. Um, Mayo, that is not here, was supposed to talk about uh, the uh, models of production. 
and the crisis affected also the models of production in uh, this city but uh, everywhere in the world. As I mentioned before, we are uh, the area in which uh, the cooperative and uh, the collaborative part uh, are overlapping, is uh, bigger probably now and uh, widening. Um, well, well, while the area of uh, a competitive model of production is decreasing. Uh, I'm not an economist, uh, so I can't deepen uh, this concept uh, properly, but um, this is what the people uh, talking with me are telling about uh, the model of production they are trying to um, realize working and co-working, collaborating, cooperating in these uh, spaces and in these areas. Um, at the beginning, my research was supposed to be an ethnographic observation of the digital agenda process, but uh, uh, my, all my research uh, is driven by the answers people are giving me, and so I, uh, this was the supposed to be, uh, this is the supposed to be research, and uh, everything uh, was uh, just uh, um, uh, driving me to work on uh, uh, the knowledge society and the communities in the center of uh, uh, the picture. The method I applied is uh, the ethnography of place, places and communities, uh, just 12 in-depth interviews to extract keywords uh, and main concepts and uh, the analysis of documents. Um, these are the keywords uh, that are emerging uh, from my interviews and uh, yesterday, talking with uh, some of them, I realized that, that uh, my interviews were uh, really emotional. When the discourse of the people I was uh, uh, interviewing uh, was going to the part, the shifting part, the part uh, talking about around uh, the, the crisis, my interviews started of being every interview. I mean, the whole, the, the all, except your probably, but <laughs> the 12 interviews uh, started uh, being more emotional. Uh, the crisis is, um, I mean, I'm a psychologist as a background, so for me it's harder to not uh, be so uh, interested in emotions. Uh, but uh, the people are living personally this uh, um, crisis as a trauma and not an individual trauma, but a social trauma. So I will uh, deepen uh, probably in my further researches the part about uh, feeling miserable and with, uh, without a future after the crisis. Uh, but they feel also attractive, uh, sustainable in some ways, in some different ways from uh, the previous vision of uh, sustainability they, they had. Um, they feel the violence of uh, uh, this model of uh, production and they are hearted by the violence of this model of uh, production and uh, they are concerned about uh, the place's safety because if you want to work and live in a uh, cheap uh, place like the artist, uh, most of the artists working here are doing, uh, you have to accept that the place in which you are working, uh, even if it is uh, helping you to have this uh, collaborative or cooperative model that you want to reach, is a place in which you don't feel safe. Uh, don't feel safe because they are totally um, readapted for this kind of activities, but they are, most of the nave in which the artists are working are totally destroyed or are done with materials that are totally unhealthy. So uh, a lot of people I interviewed were saying, okay, I aim to have a space, for instance, in the hangar instead of working in this occupied place because sometimes I need to feel safe, to, see, to feel healthy in the place uh, in which I work. So this is another issue that usually it's not mentioned uh, in any political program or, or what else or in any in, in political debate, but it is uh, something that I realized is uh, really a concern uh, that uh, uh, some creatives has about uh, their work and their lifestyle in uh, or personal life and health uh, in future. Uh, 
I'm not talking about this. Uh, it was about the city grid. If you need information, I will uh, give you later. Um, I decided to sum up uh, uh, the main results of my research uh, using some titles of books uh, that were uh, mentioned by the people I was interviewing. Uh, most of the people are uh, summarizing uh, their feeling of being uh, attracted and then evicted uh, from Barcelona, uh, mentioning uh, La Ciudad Mentirosa de, uh, by Delgado. And uh, some of these people are also attending to uh, his uh, um, uh, speeches uh, and uh, his groups. I have read uh, this book thanks to Matteo that uh, started me to, <laughs> introduced me to Delgado and uh, his uh, production. And uh, I think that it is um, easy for them, according to their interview, to uh, agree to this uh, um, vision of uh, a line city, a city that is able to promise you a lot and then to deny you uh, the uh, basic human rights, uh, just suddenly. Uh, another uh, book uh, that summarizes more or less what I'm saying is No Color by Andrew Ross. Uh, he was talking about uh, what uh, was happening during uh, uh, the um, dot com uh, uh, moment to the people working in techie without any rights, work rights, and so on. And um, this is what is happening probably here. Uh, just 10, year, 10 years later. Uh, I think the model of uh, this smart city is uh, built uh, on uh, the model of the internet explained in uh, uh, the rise of uh, the network uh, society by Castells, but it is not completely realized. Um, people uh, from the emotional or individual point of view uh, are saying uh, more or less what Sherry Tarkel, the main uh, uh, hypothesis uh, uh, of Sherry Tarkel, that uh, they feel, even if they are working, co-working, collaborating, cooperating, they feel uh, in this city alone together a lot. And uh, technology is just uh, connecting them but in some ways, and I want to dip this, uh, this feeling, uh, in some ways it's also isolating them. So uh, this is the only um, moment, the one in which they talk about themselves as alone together, in which they mention technology as relevant. And uh, finally, we have uh, a filter bubble about knowledge. These people are not able to establish a proper relationship and to know activities close to their one that with which they can collaborate because there are no places or no opportunity of real networking among communities. And this is what they are saying. So uh, if I can suggest someone to the uh, political uh, who is doing the policy of this city, I suggest them to uh, create spaces or opportunities for these communities to know each other and to share, really to share uh, their expertise and uh, their vision. Okay, um, this was uh, the last, this is the last uh, slide because I think uh, I'm too long. Um, I, uh, I have to come back to Bologna. Uh, I don't want to, but I have. Uh, so, um, what's happening now in Bologna? Uh, in Bologna, they are building uh, a new area. Um, I mean, it was more or less uh, finished, and they decided to use this area to establish there something like um, a Disneyland for food. Because, uh, you know, here you have the tourism as the keyword for the city, in Bologna we have food. Our main resource is food. A Disneyland for food where you can uh, kind of Italy you know, the brand. The man that is uh, dealing, leading this project is the man, the founder of Italy. It, uh, Italy. Well, uh, okay, Italy. <laughs> the sound is the same. And, uh, but, but, they are, uh, of course, doing this without uh, talking with the citizens. 
the citizens decided to organize some assemblies uh, to debate about uh, which will be the impact of these activities, not only in, their, uh, in the city, at the city level, at the urbanistic level, but also about their habits uh, related with foods, about their lifestyle, about uh, their uh, work condition, job conditions, uh, job rights, and uh, about speculation, and uh, why, uh, how this uh, experience will be related with uh, the exposition uh, we are hosting in Milan in 2015. I sincerely hope that uh, the, pro the process uh, will be not so similar as the process that here in Barcelona uh, has created the, the Ventidos Robber. But <laughs> I have the feeling that they are too late, the citizens are too late to start this uh, process of debate to make it really different. So coming back home, uh, what I want you to do is just to use this experience of being here and uh, the debate uh, I had the opportunity to listen to here uh, to um, empower uh, the debates there, uh, highlighting the contradiction of a urbanistic or economic uh, plan that is not able to listen to the smart citizens living in the city. Uh, thank you very much, Valentina. Any question? Alexandra. Yes, uh, thank you, Valentina, for your very interesting presentation. I have, you were talking about the emotional aspects of the engagement with the city, but uh, also can you relate this with an economy of affections that uh, how do you see the, the question? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, I'm not able to... Um, okay, this is the main obstacle of this research. Uh, that is really interdisciplinary, as I am, and he, as he is, and the whole group is. That uh, um, there are so many uh, things that we can say about this and talking about the emotions of these, uh, these people. And the economy of emotions is something that we want to, to, to explore as uh, a background on which we can place uh, some of the data we, we, we collected. But at the moment, I wasn't able to do it uh, or to study enough uh, the literature to understand on which uh, uh, stream I can uh, position my, my research. So yeah. It's something that I would like to do. Any other question? Okay, then, as a, as a chair, uh, I need to introduce myself as a discussant. Um, yes, I'm a discussant. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Valentina, for organizing that, bringing all, uh, all together here. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. It has been very interesting for me. Uh, what I will do is very briefly is try not to discuss each paper. Because, I mean, we had the, I think that it has been self-explanatory because they have done it very well. Uh, second, because, I mean, there has been, each paper has had discussion. Then I just want to highlight some points, some commonalities. And finally, a, a devil's advocate question that uh, maybe is out of order, but I apologize for that. Uh, um, also, maybe I'm, 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 I'm biased because I know very well all the, all the three uh, people who have presented, and maybe... I will talk about things that it has been some very explicit in the presentations, others maybe not as much, but I know that, that, that they have in, in it. Just only one advice to the first speaker, please change your co-writer. It's not helping you at all. Uh, 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 let's go. The first, uh, the first thing, I think that all, of, all, all the presentations face with a, with a conflict in itself in the presentations that they are talking about the smart city that is a very speculative issue because it's basically speculative because there is a lot of discourse, there's a lot of talk about smart cities, internet of things and so on, uh, uh, but actual existing a smart city or uh, heavily drive and coherent uh, strategies of creativity and, and part on, 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 on technology or a smart city doesn't exist. I mean, uh, what you've been talking all the three is more about futures in the present 
I mean, how uh, social practices, people, in, I mean, in the first one about city council strategies, uh, uh, they were about makers, uh, Valentina about creative co communities, it's, it's about, about uh, the how people envision a future and try to locate themselves in, in, in it through the present. Uh, which brings me to the second issue. Uh, I think that the seminar was about place, but at the end of the, uh, the day, I think that the three presentations were not about place. The place was, was the frame, and this is not a critique. It was about the smart people, or, or people, uh, citizens, and papiers, uh, architects, uh, makers, uh, and, and, and the role of how they try to position themselves in, a, in this framework, this place that is the smart city Barcelona. Uh, funnily enough, in all, in, all, in all three papers, you could see that, that people or creative communities, makers, sans papiers, uh, normal people, is going in one direction, or I mean at one direction. And you see that governance, public institutions are going the other direction. I mean, that's, that's a thing to, uh, uh, to take into account. Which brings us that all three papers, in one way or another, uh, under research of these three people, uh, talk about tensions and conflicts, contradictions, uh, misplacements, about moral contradictions between your morals, what you want to, the common good that you want to achieve, and your position as a maker, and this kind of, for instance, post-colonial uh, computing, uh, about the use of public and private spaces, economic conflicts, the crisis, the creative, uh, creativity within the Ignados. And in trying to do so, these tensions emerge that they are both interlinking mat very material things like, like uh, actual existing buildings, super blocks, talking about, about, about the physicality of your own space, uh, living conditions that are very material. On the other hand, imaginaries, uh, futures, creativity, uh, things of belonging, uh, and putting a more kind of non-material way of, of, of living in the world. Which brings uh, that if smart cities is, is, is sold as a, and, and most of these communities of makers or, or, uh, or creative people find themselves, and this is maybe this is not a thing that really what has been expressed in the papers, but I know for talking with you, uh, all of you, about this research, it is the case that has feel, in a certain sense, uh, a, politica, a political position. It's not about politics, it's about making uh, technology enhancing and, and, and if you want technological social, social solution is more utopian. In all these representations, there is a lot of politics. Politics, um, uh, Deborah has talked about post-colonial computing and the way that you can t want to do the common good, but there is other politics going on in the world and other structures. Valentina about, about precarity, crisis, indignados, how this uh, so positively non-politicized non, non communities through indignados, through uh, the crisis, become kind of saying, we want another kind of society, uh, even if they don't express it very well. Which brings us to the, 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 the last point that, that I think that when you see the strategy of Barcelona, as, as Uch has presented, and the conflicts that emerge, the, the, the conflicts of, of the makers and their positionality, and what Valentina has told us as, as a creative community is that it's a, a major question about about the role of creativity and, and producing technologies in, in the sense of what for or how this is developed. I mean, I think that for me there are two important things that is, is which kinds of models of production creativity want. And in a certain sense, always creativity has always a part of conflict, contradictions in, in itself. And what kind of city we, we want. I mean, it's, it's here where I will arrive to just only one single point and, and I, then I think people can rather whatever uh, the, the, the participants can answer me or not, or just talk about other things, but what kind of city we want and for whom. I mean, thinking that, let, let, let's say it, and with this I will finish. When you see the most creative places or people who attract more these kind of communities, I'm thinking New York, San Francisco, London, that they are global cities. We are not a global city, Barcelona, I'm afraid. So, But they are places where all these conflicts emerge. I mean, it's a complex with cities with uh, strong disparities, strong uh, uh, strong conflicts and so on, which brings me, I just miss this kind of polemics. I was, uh, it came to my mind, thinking on the creative process, this, this fantastic ending that is uh, Carol Reed's uh, third man when Orson Welles, just forgetting about what Graham Greene has, has brought and inventing himself in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Vienna Eye, how it's called, uh, the, the London Eye, uh, the, the Noria, 
uh, says to, the, to his uh, former friends, you know what the fellow said in Italy, for 30 years under the Borgias they had warfare, terror, murder and bloodshed, but they produced Michelangelo, Leonardo, Da Vinci and the Renaissance. In Switzerland they had brotherly love, they had 500 years of democracy and peace. And what did that produce? The cuckoo clock? Uh, I mean, just uh, the point is, is uh, what I wanted to reflect is that in, in all three uh, presentations, and more generally speaking, not in the presentations, but when you talk with uh, creative communities and those who are more politicized and so on, there is many times a kind of, or even city council kind of non-conflict utopian society and, and so on. And maybe uh, it's not about how you solve these conflicts, but how, or, um, rather than say that it's not about that avoiding conflict or that we can do a political uh, non-conflict city, but how you manage the conflicts in order that social injustice or creative processing uh, are enhanced, but being reflexive with, with this kind that you cannot avoid conflict. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much to everybody. Well, uh, I don't know if somebody has any questions or not to me, eh? To the, to the, uh, well, thank you very much for coming and see you next time. No, uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, I, especially because I can compare what I'm doing here to what I have done uh, previously in New York uh, about uh, the health uh, reform uh, that's from by Obama and uh, the involvement of the community, the citizens community in the decision and the application of this uh, big reform they had, this big law they had. It is true that here is totally different and when you ask to the people uh, about themselves and the opportunity they have to um, to be uh, listened to uh, or uh, by the government, uh, the people that are uh, Catalans uh, answered me saying, uh, "Okay, I have a friend, or I have uh, someone that I know that is working in the Generalitat." Generalitat or in the adjuntament that could uh, be the person uh, to do this project, uh, to do this activity, to do that. I'm sorry because I'm saying something that is uh, politically <laughs> relevant, but it emerged from my interviews. So, the people that are not uh, uh, Catalans are answering. Uh, that uh, the problem is that they are not Catalans, so they are not welcome in any kind of uh, institutional debate. Or their ideas are just uh, stopped below uh, the uh, Catalan uh, network. Uh, they are not allowed to get in this network. And uh, from a sociological point of view, I can say that uh, the, probably the biggest community, the two big communities I can uh, identify in this city are the Catalans and the not Catalans. Um, especially during the hype of uh, the Catalan independence. independence. Uh, I don't know because I don't know the political system so well and the government system so well. Uh, and I don't know the numbers, uh, but I know that uh, this is uh, in some way similar to what is happening in Rome, for instance, but not everywhere in Italy. I mean, in the regions, and uh, Putnam is saying something similar in, uh, about Italy in uh, an article that is called the Prosperous Community. Uh, that in regions like Emilia Romagna and Tuscany, in which uh, the civil society organization is able to organize themselves to um, um, advocate any kind of issue, uh, historically uh, organized uh, uh, as a community to advocate any kind of issue, um, you have uh, um, more creativity and more opportunity, opportunities of development. This is what Putin says. 
in regions in which you haven't this civil society that is able to organize a community of interest uh, in an effective way, you have a less level of uh, creativity, I mean, of innovation, you say, and also um, a, less, a, a bigger distance between the political level and uh, the civil society level. So I can say something, I could say it's that probably it is what is happening here. Uh, you have uh, uh, a short experience of uh, civic activism and uh, active communities uh, and uh, you are facing this hype of uh, a, a community that has a strong identity right now. Well, rather than, maybe I would like to engage with Valentina because I have a different point of view. I mean, I'm not that sure about this Catalan divide, I would rather say that from my, from my experience as being a Catalan <laughs> and uh, precarious <laughs> Catalan, uh, I would say it's more about, I mean, again, it's not about migrants or immigrants, I mean, it's, it's about, uh, in my way of seeing, it, the town council is, is quite open to to deal with uh, uh, foreign uh, investors if, if they have money. I mean, they have the city protocol. They have opened the doors of Barcelona to foreign companies. I'm not judging this. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that. And on the other hand, uh, I had another point uh, in mind. Uh, yeah, about civil society engagement. I'm not that sure that we have that short experience. I mean. In the 80s, neighborhood associations did a lot, a lot of things, and, and to some extent shaped the Barcelona model, the well-known Barcelona model of public engagement and, 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 and working class uh, struggles in Barcelona has been very well known. I mean, in, during the Civil War, we collectivized things. We were the first, like, modern uh, European city to, to, to have almost all utilities and production run in a collective way. So I think we, are, we have this. The thing is that maybe this civil society engagement goes totally in another way and direction. I mean, we have the Plataforma de Efectos por la Hipoteca. I, know, I don't know how creative they are. They are very creative, but they are not dealing with the creativity we are talking here about, but they are creative in occupying banks and and, and, and I mean, and protecting the, the, the one of the most important rights of, of citizen, which is having a place to sleep. So I'm think I have many friends and I have exp that civil society, I mean, there is a, a strong engagement, but maybe not on the very same terms uh, we are talking about here right now, but we can discuss. I'm lost. Um, I agree with you about, uh, at, at least in my experience, in my fieldwork, there is no difference between Catalans, not Catalans, and the relation with the government in the sense that the things that they are doing. At least maybe because I'm working with techies, and techies are really mobile people, and, and they are connected with projects, internationals, and kind of things. Um, but I, the point is, what's mean government? Because if you we are talking about institutions, policies, people, what are talking. And at least in my ethnography, because I'm doing an ethnography, government appears in different levels. One level is what people say about government, and it is more connected with this policy or improving our way to construct this kind of technology, or we can do, or we can, we can get displaced because the government is giving us, or government are giving us spaces for lab factories in this neighborhood and kind of things. Next, people who are coming from the government to talk with people in, in, in places or things like that, and there are abstract level of uh, the government of Catalonia or the government of Spain of commission, European Commission. There are different levels to that, the way that appear government in the fieldwork. But in the other sense, or specifically the things that I connect with the policies that are related with the topic of 
technology on a smart city or the, the kind of technology at least I'm researching. I had an experience, I went to, uh, because I'm working on trying to connect in some point Barcelona with London, but I'm working mainly here in Barcelona. I went to London with some techies and people who is working in Internet of Things in Barcelona, and they are Catalans, uh, to uh, Open Tech Festival in London in May of the last year. And at the end of the first day, that was a really intensive day because it was a presentation of people from London Council, pe people from Cisco, people from big companies and a small project and individual projects and everything. One of the guys that uh, was with me said something like, this is, real, it, this is really the thing that I want. The government will be present in my spaces. And I realized, okay, they feel the government are not present in their spaces. And that kind of things, I, 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 I'm trying to tracing what means government in my fieldwork or what they feel or, or, but I'm not connected with the kind of analyze that what government means in this topic. But I think it's really interesting your perception, coming back to the starting point, I'm, I think it's interesting the, the perception that the, there is a difference between Catalans and the Span uh, Spanish or foreign or others. Okay, no, maybe you can explain more because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I try to not mention this <laughs> because, it, you know, I, we are at the walk <laughs> and it could be hard. <laughs> but uh, it's something that emerged uh, in in my um, in my interviews. Uh, Probably it's biased by the fact that uh, uh, most of the um, um, people that describe themselves uh, as uh, mir miserables uh, came with less money, with uh, not a family network here, and so on. Probably there are more variables that being Catalans or not Catalans. If you are Catalan here and you are evicted from your house, you can stay in your parents' house. Uh, if you are not and your uh, family is somewhere else, uh, you have the crisis factor as uh, a, big, uh, a bigger point uh, that is changing everything uh, in terms of the relationship. Moreover, my level is not uh, the individuals, but uh, is the community. So I need to find which, is, uh, which are the factors or the values or uh, the visions uh, that is uh, uh, creating the texture of a community. And uh, if uh, I interview 12 people and uh, uh, the six people that are not Catalan are mentioning uh, Catalanity as uh, um, a measure of uh, not being a Catalan as a measure of difference, I have to, to take it. And they are linking this uh, with uh, the actual opportunity uh, to work or to realize their project here. They are just saying, okay, I haven't done the class of Catalan because I hadn't time or I'm not, uh, I don't like studying languages. And uh, when I went to ask for my, um, which is the number to, to be a citizen here, okay, the, the ID number, uh, they told me, uh, okay, but uh, you are a creative, so more or less you haven't a job. Uh, you, uh, are, uh, uh, com fr you are coming from outside in your incomings, uh, your salary is uh, really variable and low, and moreover, you haven't taken any class uh, of Catalan, so you are not so interested in uh, staying in Barcelona. Barcelona is a place uh, like uh, uh, everything else. And, uh, or, and so they hadn't uh, the opportunity, for instance, to apply for a grant uh, because uh, they needed uh, the code to, uh, to apply uh, as a resident uh, for a residency in the younger. This is one of the tons of uh, cases uh, I've done. So this is why they mention uh, this uh, as uh, a problem. 
people that are well positioned with an enterprise, for instance, are finding difficulties, especially if they come from an um, Anglo-Saxon system, uh, because uh, this is not being Catalan or Catalan, uh, it's the Mediterranean way in which we do, um, we work. But uh, find it difficult to understand that uh, taking a beer with like with uh, urban beers uh, probably helps uh, your uh, uh, startup more than taking uh, an appointment uh, in the proper office and uh, going there uh, to speak. And uh, I met uh, an entrepreneur that told me that he had uh, this appointment and he discovered that the person that was in charge in the office was not able to speak in English. He was able to speak in Catalan and uh, in uh, Spanish. So this person was totally surprised because this, uh, the, the officer was not able to interact uh, with him. And he said, okay, well, and now I need to take uh, a class of uh, probably Catalan uh, to start doing my businesses here. And this is why uh, they mentioned this uh, um, measure as relevant to um, exploit their uh, their opportunities to find a work or to, to deal uh, with a project. Uh, have I answered to your question or it is more or less clear? <laughs> okay, just coming back to, to answer your question, I won't enter in this debate. Uh, you said, you, is it one of the places that less, uh, that there was a simplistic vision of, of and it's maybe, may, maybe they have particularized, but I think it's more complex and they know that, but, but in 10 minutes I'm, I'm trying, you know, but, but Indeed, it, this is depends because I mean, uh, how we are, how is the concept of civil society understood in Germany or the north of Europe and, and, and here in the south, but particularly in, in, in Catalonia and I would say in Catalonia, you said there are, there is no civil society activism because always the government uh, needs the help of the government. I will say that for the research that I did, not in technologies but in urban governance over the years, the point is that. Uh, is a way that what it means civil society here and, and these activists. Because if you ask to anybody in the, in, the, in the city, they always tell you, no, no, we have a rich civil society and then always there is the, the second point. Now, look at Madrid, they don't have civil society. Uh, but the, the, the point is precisely that civil society here, uh, I mean, some people say that here we met the public-private partnership. And one of the, one, not the only, but one of the, one of the reasons of, of this kind of surprising from coming from you living in London and whatsoever coming here and see this, this is because it's a construction of the Spanish modern state was really weak and it took more than the rest of Europe. I mean, till the 1980s, 90s, we don't, didn't have a, a sort of comparable uh, modern state to the rest of Europe. And one of the things that you had regions like, like Catalonia and the Basque Country, precisely the more industrialized, but with a state that is still was thinking on the ancient regime. And one of the ways of creating, uh, creating uh, modern, modern, infrastructure, modern infrastructure, like the train from Barcelona to Mataró, that was the first one in, in Spain, or the, the health system and so on, was always public-private. I mean, the famous now PPPP, public-private partnerships, is the way how it was built the city in many respects. What I mean for that, that then here, uh, civil society never has been autonomous or the government has been autonomous. I mean, you have the biggest issue. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, when I had the discussion before this seminar about, about this, the, 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 the changing of mayor from, from socialist to the Convergencia Union and that they might look, they try, uh, they might try to present themselves as different, but you can see a trajectory. At the end of the day, the, the, the strategic metropolitan plan is what frames any kind of urban strategy in Barcelona. The, the strategic metropolitan plan is set by the city councils, the so-called civil society, basically chamber of commerce, uh, business elites, and, and, and the unions. And this is a way that for good or for bad, society works, or a mainstream society works in, 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 in Barcelona. And how you don't have really a clear government a strategy against the others, but you have, or a clear civil society in this sense, against um, um, enact, uh, working outside the government. I mean, they, they always go uh, both together. 
obviously they're not so pointed out. When you find this kind of con conflict is when you go to the social movements, I mean. But this will explain like, for instance, in difference like London or, I mean, it was again a conversation that suddenly um, uh, Boris Johnson discovered that there is a cluster of, uh, of, of high-tech companies in East London that they didn't spot it because people concentrated together, worked together, and didn't give a damn about, about, about the mayor or, or, or politics and so on. Here it's not happening in that sense, but it's always in that way. If, I don't know if I answer your question, but... No, oh, yeah, but I think it's not contradiction with this kind of public-private partnership. No, no, no. But, but yes, you're right. I mean, here, I mean, I can see strategic documents of the city council that I don't know if they exist because I'm not able to reach them. But from with the last government and this one. Right about, for example, Cisco, and I'm not sure, but I. I think you went to IoT conference and a smart city conference this year. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> the point is when people are thinking, uh, what is drawing today the development in Barcelona, who is, everybody knows, one of the models of smart cities in Europe, the answer in this two conference was Cisco. But the real thing is when you go and talk with the companies that are really working here, like Urbiotica, World Sensing, um, Sodertia, and everybody who is really working on technology here, they don't have any relationship with Cisco. So Cisco is talking for others to the technology because they are trying to grow and they are growing the market. But the point is mainly the, the, the way it's not about how appearance in media, but if you go and ask to write straight to the people with your relationship with government or Cisco, it's quite small, <laughs> I mean. And I think we are talking about speed, not talking about what really, are, what really is happening, at least in companies that are creating technology or in labs. And I think Cisco, I don't want to talk about Cisco, but <laughs> the point is, um, did a really good movement uh, imposing Barcelona as the place to, to contact in Europe for Internet of Things and smart city, smart city and bring a lot of people around the world. But really, what is happening here as a smart city? Everybody in the conference were asking, but what is happening here? Nothing. What is happening here? So when, when we are talking about government, Cisco companies or communities, so I'm not sure if we are talking about the, the thing that really is happening in Barcelona outside of this building or outside of our speech or outside of our research. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It's a long, it has been a long seminar, but very interesting. And thanks for the contributions from the from everybody, the presenters and the public. And hopefully, will be another another seminar sooner or later. Uh, uh, we just just can announce that we will have in the spring Mark Graham from the Oxford Internet Institute talking about internet geographies. And in July, we'll, we'll have Alex Loftus from King's College talking about the ecology of the city. And, but we don't have dates yet. We'll, we will pass you the dates if you are interested. Sorry, and we have the Open Data Day <laughs> that I'm organizing in uh, the mob. It's a co-working, and everyone is invited. Uh, there will be some speeches about how to use open data in the morning and uh, in hackathon in the afternoon. Write me. If you are interested, I will send you the form.